nature, which is, so I'll, I'll unpack that a little bit. Uh, there are lots of things in nature that repeat, uh, but repeat kind of slowly. So let's imagine uh, a propeller of an airplane for a second. A, bit, Just a natural a, a phenomenon. A natural phenomenon like a propeller on an airplane. So when you imagine a propeller, uh, when it first starts up, um, it's repeating not very quickly. So it sounds kind of like this, you know, mechanical whooshing sound. Um, but what's interesting, and I think everyone will recognize this happening, when you hear a propeller start spinning very quickly, um, you know, as a plane might be starting to take off, you ever notice that the sound of that starts changing and you start hearing almost what sounds like a droney note. You see, there starts to be like a drone note in there that you hear that doesn't sound mechanical. It actually starts to sound like a sort of weird note. Um, and what's happening is that basically once something starts repeating at a certain level of speed, your ear and your brain start perceiving this as a note. That if rhythm repeats in rapid enough succession, eventually it becomes a note. The threshold of, of where we start hearing pitch is usually around 20 hertz, which is hertz is a, a, a unit uh, in science that uh, has to do with frequency. So how many times something happens, how many cycles something happens per second. So 20 hertz is 20 cycles, 20 somethings per second. Um, and what's interesting, too, is actually that um, the brain may have something funny about that area of frequency because, for example, um, uh, it's approximately that same area where uh, frames in, in film start looking like fluid motion as well. So that's fascinating. So that, that 20, 20 vibrations per second to, you know, uh, threshold yes. is really interesting. So it is interesting. that seems to be where our mind orders things and looks for commonalities and structure. That's the point where our brains sort of just get tired and we're like, Bleh, yeah, brain... I don't know, music. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so your brain just summarizes a lot. It's like so much information. Your brain's like, oh, actually, that's the sound now. So Hertz is a measure of how many times per second something vibrates. And when we're hearing pitch, our brains are processing those vibrations. They're converting them into a note. And what that note is depends on how many vibrations we're hearing. There's thousands of all these different frequencies. There's all these different ways of making these sounds. So um, one of the interesting things is that different cultures uh, have different uh, frequencies that they've chosen as being the ones that, uh, to some extent, kind of matter to them for their music. Uh, and in Western music, you know, we have certain frequencies that we've kind of, uh, you know, there's these conventions we've agreed to. and We say, okay, this is that frequency. Uh, the most f famous one is A. Uh, which is defined actually as 440 hertz. So 440 vibration, you know, cycles a second. Uh, this is A. So we choose this frequency and we say, hey, 440 hertz, that pitch is, uh, is A, which actually I can uh, play right here. So A is this. That's A. The air molecules here, when I hit this, are, you know, uh, vibrating at 440 times a second. So that's what you hear. Right, so A is 440 yes. vibrations per second. Yes. What if you've got like 441? Yep, totally, totally. So that would be, you know, uh, there's a certain uh, range around notes where uh, the brain basically feels it's still the A, and uh, that would be a little bit what, what in music we'd call sharp. So things that are a little bit higher than a set frequency, we say they're a little sharp, and things that are a little under a frequency, we, we call them a little flat. In other words, pitchy dog? <laughs> so what, how do octaves fit into this? So if you're at 440 vibrations per second with A, yep. like what happens when you jump up an octave? What's going on? So basically when you double a frequency, it's what we would call an octave. Uh, so, oh, which, which okay. is, so, so it's that simple. It's that simple. So basically, if A is 440, when you double the frequency of that and you say, okay, I just want to double that frequency. I want to hear 880. You hear that. Okay, so just to be clear, pretty much every human, when they hear 440 or 880 hertz, 
that frequency is going to sound like the same note, but what they call it and what they consider a scale, those those things will vary across cultures. Exactly. Okay, so we understand pitch. We understand the vibrations relatively well. So now how are we how are we bending towards this magical uh, circle of fifths? We're only playing one thing at a time. Exactly. Which is not how most music sounds. Most music doesn't just do one at a time. So the second note. So the second note. So we're going to start with the most basic one we already talked about to keep it simple. So what if we play the A and then we play the other A one octave up at the same time? Okay. And Adam, you already said it. That's an octave. So we got an octave here. So we're already playing what's called an interval. That's two notes at once. So that's an octave. It sounds really consonant, really stable. And an interval can be any two notes Any at two once. notes. Any two notes. I could play, you know, I could play, I could do any of these. These are all intervals, you know? The, all of these things are intervals. And each interval is related. Uh, it's just the ratio of these frequencies. So this one we know is two to one. So now what if we choose another real... Wait, yeah, sorry. It it's That's two... To, so what you just played yes. was the octave. And the octave. it's two to one because... Yes. Because the frequency of this one is 440 hertz, and the frequency of this one is 880 hertz. So if you just take 880 divided by 440, it's two. Okay. It's doubled. I feel comfortable with that amount just of totally math. totally... Du- that's, that's as much as we will need. Okay. It's just doubled. That's it. So, and I'm just... So let's keep it simple here. What if, I'm just going to throw a number out there. What if I said, I want to increase the ratio here. I want to take this A, and I want to increase the frequency by 50%. That's all I want to do. I just want to say, what does the note sound like if I increase this 50%, okay? That's E. So that's the ratio of A to E is 3 to 2, and that's actually how you define it. It's it's basically 50% more frequency is a fifth, we call it. And this is the, and the name in music theory we give it, we call it a perfect fifth. So this feels like a lot of math for me to have to manage in this setting. But it sounds like what you're saying is that the relationships between the notes in an interval, that relationship can be summarized mathematically. And our brains tend to like it better. They, they like the sound better when that math is actually pretty simple. In, in Western music, we've chosen certain very simple uh, relationships between frequencies, and the fifth is is this one. So that's A to E to E. Yes, and that's an interval because it's two notes. Yes. Two notes. It's an interval. Certain types of intervals, uh, you know, tend to feel certain degrees of stable or unstable, and this is.